Hey, sister. Hey, sister. Join me, Courtney Lewis. And me, Carly Ferguson. In our conversational podcast about everyday situations. You can count on us to tell it to you straight with our own sisterly spin. Consider this a phone call with your own Southern sisters as we discuss with you personal accountability, healthy relationships, managing responsibilities, and contributing to society. Each episode will consist of straight talk and a call to action. Your sisters are calling. Thanks for answering. Welcome to Hey Sister. This is episode 18, Home Sweet Home. We are wrapping up this month of love in February, our previous topics being double dating, maternal love, extended family. And now we're just continuing those practical applications of love and talking about how caretaking, decorating, and creating an inviting atmosphere in the home is so important. Before we introduce our guest expert and dive into today's episode, we want to do a quick inside scoop about how we decide on our weekly topics. You might not know it, but Carly and I actually ask for inspiration in our own personal prayers Then when she and I have our regular phone calls, ideas just flood our conversation. We have felt a huge amount of love for our worldwide sisterhood, y'all, as we hammer out details in our usual chats. It's been amazing to watch firsthand our own creative process as a team, because while Carly and I are very similar in some areas, we're both very opinionated and passionate. So without heavenly inspiration, I really don't know if we'd have ever made it past our show's trailer episode, if I'm being honest. That said, today's topic and our guest host came to Carly and me with complete clarity, and we know she's the person for this job, as she is the woman who has had the most impact on both of our lives, and she always strived to have a warm and comfortable home where her kids wanted to be. You guessed it, she's our mom, Nancy Watson Shane. Nancy is a Texan woman, born and raised, and grew up as the youngest child in a family of 12. In fact, if you have family that hails from Texas, your parents or grandparents may have heard of her family's traveling band called the Watson Heirs. Music ran in their family and filled their home growing up. One of her brothers, Walter Watson, even made our Hey Sister custom intro and outro theme song. Anyway, together with our dad, she raised four children in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. She was a stay-at-home mom with us for most of our lives. And when we were all in school, she started her own interior finishes business called Go Faux It. And that's F-A-U-X. She has a knack for popping walls with dramatic effects and transforming furniture too. Nancy has been an incredible example to us of not only pursuing personal dreams, but also including the whole family in work projects to improve and personalize the home. I'm not going to be able to keep up calling her Nancy for the rest of this episode, though. So since this is a sisterhood, we're just going to call her mom. And you're invited to consider her a momfluence in your life today, too. Mom, welcome to Hey Sister. I am so honored and so proud to be here with my daughters. Y'all are amazing. Oh, shucks. We're so glad you're here. So mom, just jumping right into it. What is the difference that you see of a house versus a home when you enter into a home as a folk finisher? The difference between a house and a home, I think, is the living that goes on in the home that turns it from a simple house into that home. And that's something that a wise uncle that I had growing up, that's the first thing he would say when he would come into our house filled with 10 kids and lots of neighbor kids. He would say, it takes a heap of living in a house to make it home. And that always stuck with me. So in order to make a house a home, I think it does take a heap of living how can we do that? That's the question, especially right now. What an appropriately timed episode to have this after two years of pandemic where the home has been the nucleus. That's the center of our gathering. And this is a great opportunity for us to look at our homes and say, is it a house or is it a home? And if it's not a home by now, how can I make it there? I love that explanation. And I do love that quote too. The heap of living. Mom, you've talked to me before about how when you've gone into different homes and your own included, that you feel like every home has an expression. Could you talk a little bit about what that means? That's something else. I think in the digital age right now, when you're typing something, you're sending a text to someone. There's a tendency when that person receives the text to read into the words. And so the way I finish most of my texts is a way to express myself without having to type it out, without having to actually put it in words. 
And the way I do that is through the emojis. Through those emojis, I like to express what I'm feeling, especially right now with all the masks. You don't see someone's mouth. You don't see their face. And a lesson that I taught many years ago was that the smile is the window to your face that lets others know your heart is in. And I think that's a lot like our homes. And when I go visit homes in order to do a bid to work on their home, I walk in and I feel the character of that home, the expression of that home. I think that's important. So what I want to be able to illustrate to you today, verbally talk you through is what emoticon would you give your home right now? What is the expression you want to give your home? If somebody were to walk in, what would be that expression? Would it be big eyes on the emoji that is so obviously like I'm freaking out here, especially with COVID? I think it's important to just assign an emoji to your home. And maybe one that we want it to be, because right now I think mine is the scared smile one where the wide teeth and it's like grimacing, <laughs> like we're going, we're trying and it's they're mostly like 80%, but most of the time we're trying to pick up all those extra toys that we're stepping on. And It's seasonal. As our lives are seasonal, you're going to have seasons where it's always a scary face. It's a scary <laughs> face for years. You know, sometimes you have no idea what was left on the floor when somebody follows you home from a play date. They walk in the house and you're like, oh, please, those underwear were not supposed to be there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think mine right now is the hands in the air. I've tried my best, like hands shrugging, you know, next to the face, like me, <laughs> best we can do. Or maybe the eyes that are like looking different directions and the tongue is out. Sometimes that's how it feels a little bit, but I do like that thought that your home has an expression. I've always loved when you would talk to me about different homes that you were in mom, how it would be a place that was inviting if it was a party atmosphere home, or if the home had young kids and the different energy that you could fill there or that your clients would offer you food because that's just the kind of people they were. Their home became that extension of who they were. Well, it even goes into the senses that we have. When you invite someone into your home, you want them to feel all the senses. You want to have the smell. You want to have the visual. You want to be able to hear beautiful things in the background. And some of them may be screaming. Kids may be screaming, but that's still good. The texture The things that talk to us that cause us to actually react are the senses in the home and whatever expression you have reflects on those senses. I love that. We were all kind of joking about how we feel like our home is the expression is more in like, ah, you know, how we might react when someone comes over. But in actuality, it's just saying that it's not always just defined by the typical things we think of, which are cleanliness and the decor being trendy, right? So or having children dressed. Yeah, that too. Like that when people come in, they're coming into an environment. And as you said, with the textures and all these other elements that are involved in it, I think that helps me like loosen up a bit because yeah, there might be some things out of place, but overall, what is the atmosphere that we are creating? And a lot of times that's also by how we engage with people and do we feel comfortable there? And is it a reflection of us? I think that's a good point. I love too thinking about the smells, the sights and the sounds too. We have the player piano in our house. When we entertain, we have a tendency to make a child leave the room and then start the piano in the other room. So the people that are visiting think that we did this fantastic job training our children to play the piano when it's actually, it's another faux talent because it's not even, it's the piano playing itself. But yes, yes, sounds make a difference. It makes it sound like we're someplace really exclusive and higher rung than where we actually are. You're just in the formal living room. Thinking about those different senses, the sights, the sounds and the smells, visuals and the touch, those textures. I really just love thinking about it that way, because as much as I joke that my house might be the crazy eyes, it is about the overall atmosphere and not just a one-time state of whether or not my kids are coming down the stairs in their leotard or in a bathrobe or something when somebody happens to pay a visit. I do want to make sure that we have an atmosphere that's inviting. When someone calls me and wants me to give them a bid on something, they'll be very clear about telling me what they want, how they want it to look, what color tones they want to use. And so I understand that, but I'm not going to give anyone an estimate until I see the home because I have gone into homes before where I did not feel comfortable, period. 
did not feel that it was going to be a good fit for me because of the environment. And so I would just have to respectfully deny giving them a bid because I could not do it. I just didn't feel comfortable. So that's one of those things that you want to have a home that's warm and inviting. And right now with all the remodels that are going on around us, everybody has people in their house and you need to have that standard of, I want to be able to present to people that it's a warm and inviting place where the love dwells. Mm-hmm. And I think that goes back to the heap of living, right? Where it the is. love dwells, the heap. I mean, it's not saying a tidy little pile. It's like a heap, you know? <laughs> so when we think about it, we are going to be living in our home and there's going to be areas that are in process. When somebody comes in, those senses, how are they engaged? How do we make them feel warm and invited into our home as opposed to how I sometimes feel if I am not happy with the state of our home, I'm like, Okay, get out. Mm -hmm. There's the door. I don't want you to look around too much. I have a bad habit of that. And so it's better to take pride in our home and learn how to get it in a state that we feel confident with. And we feel like it's reflective of who we are. Exactly. Exactly what I'm talking about there. How would we go about doing that? What would be a good starting point to make it feel like your own? Well, it's about warmth. You want your home to feel warm, not sterile. You don't want it to feel like if they walk in that you're going to be constantly behind them cleaning as soon as they walk by or touch something and it's awkward and you just feel like I'm not comfortable here and not feeling love and hearing harsh things or a dog at your ankles biting you as you're walking (laughs) in. You want to feel like you fit in basically that you feel comfortable in that home. And we have had guests that have come in our home before that have been so kind and sweet and friends of both of you that would say, I love being here. I love just feeling so comfortable here. And no, we try not to make them sanitize before they walk in. It's a home. We live here. And I think growing up, it always felt like we tried to, like you said about the movement and textures, try to incorporate things that were very much like your style and something that we appreciated as kids. And as Courtney said in the intro, we got to be involved as a family in making something the way you want it to look. And we all took pride in that. And I think it's good for us to take pride or have confidence in something that we've done in our home, whether we found something that we really liked and felt like, oh, I'm going to put this on this wall. And so when I see it, it, it makes me happy. It gives me a little bit of joy, right? It's part of the story. If you look around your home right now, you see things on the walls that are memories. Memories have been made and it's a chapter in your book. And those mean so much as you get older. I still walk around with our empty nest. I walk around and see the pictures that hang on the wall and remember the experience we were having at the very second when that picture was taken. I think that's crucial for generations to treat your home like it's your haven. It's your recluse. It's your getaway. It's your escape, but have it open to other people to come and enjoy it. And so, yes, there are pieces. You find the areas that you love of your home where you have peace in that room, then that's where you need to be at times in your life where you can just feel of the love and even God's love even more easily, more recognizably at that time. Speaking of that peace that you feel, whether looking at a certain item or being in a certain room in your home, trying to accomplish peace can be overwhelming when you feel like there's a lot of caretaking to do. There's always a issue with the toilet, with a sink. There's a kid that needs to be loved. There's a lot of things that you take care of as a mom. And mom, I know you just mentioned being an empty nester, but prior to being an empty nester, you had four kids at home. And I know that can feel overwhelming when you're trying to juggle both roles of being a caretaker for your home, but also caretaker for your children. So what advice can you give us to help us manage those responsibilities, especially when it comes to taking care of issues in the home? Those are constant. Yes, things always need to be repaired. People always need to be called to come in and help. And you hate to do that sometimes, or sometimes you have to pitch it to a professional to do it. But as I raised you all, I try. My father was a wonderful engineer and he taught me how to 
demo how to rip things out and how to do the plumbing and do the electrical and change the fan on the outside air conditioner compressor, the things that I learned how to do, you have to have faith in yourself, number one, that you can deal with it, that you can do it to help out. Because some of us don't have extra abundance of thousand dollars a month that you need to pay towards lighting, electrical work. You gain so much confidence in yourself. And I know for a fact that the talents and the skills that I've acquired have been because I tried, because I took something apart and put it back together. And YouTube is fantastic. Mm -hmm. YouTube is such an answer to a prayer. And then also you always start a project with the prayer. And there's so many ways that you can grow your own skills and talents in your home and work it through and bring your kids with you as you do it. Let them experience it with you. Have them teach you what they know. And then it becomes ownership for them. Then they love it that much more because they had their hands on it and they participated in it. And that makes all the difference in the world. And I had you guys working with me on jobs when you were between the age of three (laughs) and 13. I had four kids at a job with me working. I know the clients probably didn't love it, but I didn't care. And they got their money's worth for sure. I think that's a good point. I'm excited for the day when I'm using my kids and I'm not just cleaning up after them. I feel like they're the ones that do most of the destruction. But a good example of what you were saying about learning to have confidence and do something in your home. Recently, I saw that you had used the plunger on our sink (laughs) to help the drain go down because there was something stuck in the garbage disposal. And then I noticed that our tub was a little slow and I had done Drano, but I didn't really see a difference. And we were about to call the plumber And I thought, you know what? I'm going to take that new plunger I bought and I'm going to use that on the tub and it fixed it and it made me feel so good. And it gave me that sense of confidence. And so if you've got a slow drain, get a new plunger. They're so cheap. And then you don't feel like you're using the one from the toilet and you just plunge it and see if that'll work. It's worth a shot because it did make me feel better. Like, okay, now I don't have to worry about that anymore. And I can just keep moving on instead of having that stay in the back of your mind. And including your kids is so good because you can help them start to work with you and appreciate the home. Because I've been grateful that we were taught to respect the home and that it was not just something to trash. This isn't a hotel room. We're not rock stars. We take pride in it because we care for it. Even just making comments to my toddlers as we're doing something like, hey, we pick these up so we don't step on toys. And doesn't it look so good when it's clean? Like saying that to them, it's like, oh, doesn't it look so good? Doesn't it feel so good noticing those moments? Because they'll notice that and then it might help in the next go around. I think that goes back to the quote that mom taught us growing up, the more you serve, the more you love. And it applies to people and the home. Because I'm sure Carly, after you did your tub, didn't you feel more love for that tub? (laughs) Yeah. Well, I just, I felt like, yeah, we're, we're in this together. I can help you out tub. (laughs) (laughs) I'm silly, but yeah. I've learned so much over the years, how to empty a pee trap and a drain. And I am not afraid of putting my hands on anything, a clock, a dryer. I took my hair dryer apart a couple of weeks ago and rewired the circuit board and it worked great. And I thought, this is what my dad did. My father taught me to take anything apart. We never had someone come to the house and fix it. But although there are times and there's a place because sometimes you're taking care of little kids, right? Oh, I gotcha. There there are times where I know I've done the honey do list, but then I'm also like, let's just get this off our list, right? So the home is that place to have things resolved as much as possible, understanding that there's going to be times where it's processing or we're going to move it, but trying to get those outstanding projects done sooner than later. And so we're talking about those engineering aspects, I guess the things in the home that could break, but there's so many other elements to a home as well. Maybe like the colors, the feel, the textures, like you talked about, how do we put our flavor in our house when there's so many trends going on? And I just feel like I want to follow what they're doing, even though maybe that color concept isn't really true to myself. Or a white couch isn't practical for my children. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Right now, the wonderful millennial generation has created something new for me because mine's all about the drama and the style that I have been able to apply to homes that they have asked me to elaborate on. 
have always been textures and depth and warmth and the colors have always been just so incredibly moving and warm. And so as I would go into a home and look at their style, because it starts with the style, Mm -hmm. whatever the style that you want, if you want hard lines and if you want clean, cool tones, the gray, the white, the smoke, the lightest tones that you can get. You just have to know what you love. Go to your Sherwin-Williams, go to your Lowe's, go to any paint store, get a color wheel out and find your favorite colors. See what colors speak to you. And it's your taste. You're the one that determines whether or not you're going to be happy and comfortable in that room. You set the stage, you decide. 99% of my clients are the women. And so they do it very well when they tell me what they like. And I see in their home where they're leaning, what they want. It's so easy for me to step in and say, I'll help you finish the thought. Let's do it. And so that's what I recommend. If you can't decide on a color, you go pick up the color wheel and you pull out a sample and you tape it to the wall and you say, is that what I'm looking for? Is that the color that's going to make me happy? Mm -hmm. test it. You've got to test it. I always loved going with you to bids because I felt like in those moments, they would share an idea that they were going with and you would take it from there and say, okay, let's go off of that. And sky's the limit. I mean, there were some really lavish projects that you did because someone was like, I want a gold plated ceiling, or I want this whole bathroom vanity to be custom painted or something. I want castle doors or a stairwell that looks like it's straight out of a uh, Grand Canyon. Seriously, there are so many cool projects. And I love that it expands your view of what you can do in your own home, because now it is a little bit easy to pick up what you see and to kind of go off of what somebody else is done, but it's always really good to ask what suits me? What colors do I want to see in my own homes? It's what makes you feel happy and what makes you feel warm and be a trendsetter for your friends and those that you come in contact with. They'll be confident enough to do what they want to do. Exactly. You know? yeah. And you can help them. I love seeing my friends and how they do something that I would never have thought about that, but that is such a good idea. It is cool to see how we all have these unique styles and flavors. And then you go into someone's home and you get the extension of themselves and their family, their family personality as well. Mom, something we've talked about before is that transition from, as you mentioned, your parents taught you to fix what you've got because you want to take care of what you have. You don't need to have somebody else come into your home and fix things because they were very conscientious of money spending. It's called waste not, want not. That's what my parents raised me with. Waste not, want not. So this whole waste not, want not mentality of, the generation before you, mom, almost in a way flipped on its head and made your generation want to have more abundance in the home. Like we grew up with nothing. So we're going to be a little more demonstrative here and have some bigger pieces of furniture and have some more drama and it's okay to have a little bit more. And then I think it's kind of funny because it's almost like the tables have shifted now. And so mine and Carly's generation is more like, let's simplify and we can reduce the clutter. It kind of goes in waves a little bit. I don't know if there's a right or a wrong, but I do think that you're right, that you have to find what works for you and don't just go based off of current trends. Find something that really resonates with your soul in terms of the textures, all those senses that you mentioned, you really do want senses appealed to. Obviously we want to do as much as we can for ourselves, but there's times where you can't fix something yourself and you got to bring somebody in, or there's times where white doesn't speak to you. And there might be times where white does speak to you. You never know what's going to work for each person, but you have to decide on that for yourself. Very true. I want to talk a little bit about the law of the harvest. What we were talking about, let me finish that thought real quick. We were talking about how to work on the home, all the work that you have to put into a home. And it basically goes back to second Corinthians chapter nine. If you sow sparingly, then you will reap sparingly. If you sow bountifully, you will reap bountifully. So the more you give to your home, the more you reap, the more you feel that abundance of love that you're working for inside your home, the more you give to it. So it's that wonderful law of harvest. And this is the foundation for your children. You build this wonderful soil. You give the nutrients to the soil. It helps them to grow and flourish in life because of the character and the love and the dedication that you've had in your home to be a happy homemaker. Mm -hmm. The worst thing I've ever heard and the thing that used to just trigger me as a young mother was if mom ain't happy, no one's happy. 
That is a lot of responsibility for a woman to have to wear. For us to have to feel like we have to keep this smile on our face, like I said, that expression that's in your home, which expression is it going to be? Are you going to be always so overwhelmed with the work and the drudgery of doing diapers and changing bed sheets and vomit cleanup and all the things that happen to all of the mothers out there? Believe me, I remember very vividly experiencing all of that. And like I said, it's seasonal. You'll pass through that season and you'll be out of it. And you'll think, I want that back. Like days that I want it back now. But the thing is, it's that wonderful gift that we've been given to watch it play out. And when you have an attitude of gratitude in your home, where you're so grateful for what you have and your home is Christ-centered, then you feel that if mom ain't happy, no one's happy. Well, you're always going to be happy. You will always feel in your home, the love of your heavenly father and your savior, Jesus Christ. So if you keep that attitude and just remember, it's about you trying, it's about your cup being always half full and not empty, but to put it into the walls and into your character around your house, you want to build strength and have the soil nurtured and ready for the foundation that you're creating for your children to enjoy for their lives and for generations. So mom, speaking of this nurturing environment that we're trying to create in the home, and obviously if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. We all love and hate that quote. Sometimes I get unhappy if a piece of valuable furniture is ruined by a kid or if something happens, how can we take that advice of trying to stay happy or trying to not let things affect us so much if something we love is ruined? If a wall gets knocked through, if a piece of furniture gets ruined, how do we stay happy and how do we move forward even if something you value ends up getting hurt? That happens every day. With little kids, you can't protect anything. You really don't have even a chance of protecting everything in your home And you don't want to assess a value to something in your home that's higher than the value of the relationship you have with that child. What I would say to you is don't spend so much on your accessories and on pieces that you won't get to take with you in the hereafter. They are temporal things that are going to be given away or thrown away over time. If it gets ruined, if it's cracked, You have to say it's not important because my relationship with my daughter or my son means so much more. And maybe at the moment you may have an anger festering inside of you where you just want to reach out and shake them and say, why would you break that? That meant so much to me. But just make sure that they know if you take it and hold it and show it to them and say, do you know why this meant so much to me? How can you help me fix it? So it's almost perfect again. And that's why 90% of the things I bought when you kids were between the age of one and 11, we got it at garage sale. We got at a secondhand store. We picked up for less than one tenth of what it was paid for at the store because then they would have the value of it. They would say, we got a good deal on that, didn't we? We got that for a very good deal at that garage sale. Yes, we did. And look, it served our purpose fine. If something happens to it, if you run the knee out on it, it burn through the material, then it's not important. It was a dollar. It was two dollars. Don't spend so much on things that don't matter in the grand scheme of life and our happiness. Perfect. Mom, is there anything else that you'd like to add to our sisterhood today? I'd like to take this opportunity to challenge the sisters. If they're not happy with the emoji that they have posted on their front door, then let's try to change it. And the way I want you to change it is to incorporate your family take each one of your children and your husband, and you talk about the things that you really love and where you would like them to be and how you can display them so that they can be a conversation piece when someone comes into your house and you can say, this is Johnny's favorite toy. This is the one that he has had since he was two and he still loves it. And look, we even did a wall in his room and made it reflect what his thrill is of seeing these wonderful Avengers or whatever it may be. Give them an opportunity to express their creative side because it's something that you are building confidence in them that number one, you care what they like. And number two, you're going to help them get to the point where maybe they're going to be a superhero. (laughs) Maybe they're going to be an artist 
let them explore what their passion is at a very young age. And also please with your husbands, give them a chance to tell you what style they like, work with them on it, make it their home too, because a house is only a home. If you're in it together, you want your place to be the gathering place. I love that so much. Sisters, you heard your call to action this week. Make sure that your family is all on board with the emoji you want your home to express and involve your kids in valuing the different items in your home and tell them what it is that you value within your home. I love that so much. Mom, it has been so fun to have you on. We're just so glad you joined us today. And continuing along with this thought of making your house a home, next month, Carly and I are really excited to announce to y'all that we're going to have a whole month series on spring cleaning. And I know that's going to probably make your eyes roll a little bit like, oh, spring cleaning, but it's going to be so fun. I promise Carly and I have some really fun episodes in store for y'all with some great guests. We're going to talk about cleaning tips and tricks. We're going to talk about decluttering. We're going to talk about Facebook marketplace etiquette tips and tricks for selling those things. My mom mentioned getting stuff at garage sales and estate sales, those sort of things. Well, nowadays we don't go to those as much, but we do sure use Facebook marketplace. So we're going to include some ideas from Carly and I in an episode about decluttering there. We have some really fun stuff in store for you next month with spring cleaning. So come back and join us and don't forget to join us for our online conversation at the Hey Sister podcast where you can look forward to daily posts from us, whether it be roll call posts with the reminder of the call to action or our own experiences with the weekly call to action. We've got fun Friday videos from our sister Cassidy with her happy pants dance and also some of our favorite clips from each episode online. So come check us out online at the Hey Sister podcast where you can join our conversation there. We will look forward to seeing y'all next week. Have a great week, sisters. Bye. Bye. You did it, Ma. You did great. Yay! Well, I just take my Texas accent out if it <laughs> comes on too strong, because we know that I try to back it off on well, conversations, but this was a long one. Love okay. you. Talk to you later. Love you too. Bye.